In this lecture, we will discuss how we will approach rhythms and what to look forward to as we move forward. There is a general approach we will use when we look at each rhythm as we move forward. And let's look at that now. So what you have here, and you'll see, is that we'll have this table here on the left, okay? And then we'll have some rhythm about here. We'll talk about then we may have an image of the conduction system and see how there's a mechanism or something that's affecting each rhythm. And we'll go through each part of it, okay? And we'll use this chart to lead us through it. So we'll have the rhythm here. We'll look at an overview, okay? So you'll notice in this section here, there'll be an overview. There'll be the mechanism, some causes, clinical significance, and maybe some other points there, okay? Then we'll look at each point here. We'll start with the regularity. Is it regular or irregular, okay? And then if it's irregular, we have to decide is it regularly irregular or irregularly irregular, okay? From that, we'll find out the rate, okay? We'll see how to find the rate with irregular or irregular rhythms and what should be the expected rate for that rhythm. We'll look at the P wave, okay? Is the P wave present? What's the morphology of it? Where's the axis of it, okay? Which way is it heading? as well as the configuration of the P waves in different leads. We'll look at the P wave to QRS ratio. In other words, how many P waves are there for each QRS complex, okay? So here's a P wave, a QRS complex, and then this is our T wave, and then a P wave, QRS, okay? And what we would say here is that there's one P wave for each QRS complex, so one to one ratio. We'll look at the PR interval, okay? Remember, the PR interval is from the beginning of our P wave up until the beginning of our QRS complex. So this portion here is our PR interval. And remember, this represents uh, most of the, is represented by AV nodal conduction. In adults, the normal PR interval is between 120 and 200 milliseconds, okay? So we'll see, is it shortened? Is it normal, prolonged? Is it constant, okay? So we'll see how that changes and how it'll affect what we decide is the actual rhythm at hand. We'll look at the QRS interval, okay? So the QRS interval is from the beginning of our QRS complex to the end of it, okay? Is it prolonged? Is it normal? Remember, the QRS interval in adults, okay, should be between 70 and 110 milliseconds, which is about two to three small boxes. Then we'll look at grouping, okay? Are there some beats that are occurring together? or not, and we'll see how that affects different rhythms. And are there dropped beats? In other words, is there a beat that comes and then nothing else happens, and then again, something fires and then it's there, all right? So we'll see why that beat dropped and what kind of rhythms have dropped beats present. So the general orientation, how we'll look and go through each one of these rhythms is we'll start with these sinus rhythms, okay? So sinus rhythms first, and remember, when we talk about sinus rhythms, that means they're coming from our sinus node. This is our sinus node that sits here in our upper portion of our right atrium, okay? And just to review, we have our internodal pathway that comes to our AV node, okay? This coming to the left side is our Bachman bundle. And at our AV node, um, we will talk about AV junctional rhythms that also include the his bundle. We'll also talk about AV reentrant and AV nodal reentrant arrhythmias. The atrial arrhythmias, what we'll talk about happen in the atria. Okay, here's our right atrium and left atrium. Okay, so from sinus node to the atrial arrhythmias to the AV junctional arrhythmias to the AV reentrant arrhythmias, where we can have some pathways connecting the atria to the ventricles, okay, such as in Wolf Parkinson White and Long Ganong Levine syndrome. Okay, so some of those we'll see. And then we'll look at ventricular arrhythmias. Okay, so ventricular arrhythmias, those coming from our ventricles. And lastly, we'll talk about AV blocks, okay? So this is our AV node here, all right? So sometimes there can be a block, whether it's high, low, or somewhere in there, causing different degrees of blocks. And we'll see how that can uh, show up on the EKG and what we'll see uh, for each one of them. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discuss how we'll approach each rhythm as we move forward and what you can expect. I hope you learned something.